In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be walking you through how to do this Lent-inspired painting. We have a purple background, a crown of thorns, and a cross made out of nails, and I'm gonna be walking you through how to do this painting step-by-step. Step. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Amy Heisey, and I do Catholic-inspired art tutorials here on my channel every month. For this project, you need a canvas, paper, or board to paint on. You can use any size acrylic paints. I used violet, white, black, metallic, silver, and copper, but you can use any colors you have on hand, a big and small paintbrush, a paint palette or paper plate, water, paper towels, an apron to protect your clothes, chalk, and something round to trace. And if you want to do this project with kids, you can use a washable paint. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to paint our background purple. So I'm just gonna be using plain violet purple from my paint tube, but you can customize your color by um, mixing blues and reds together or customizing the shade with some purples and whites before we start to add it on our canvas. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my paintbrush and I'm trying to create like messy brush strokes. So kind of the brush stroke that I'm using is kind of like an X motion. Or if you imagine a conductor conducting an orchestra, that's kind of the motion that I'm doing with my paintbrush. And I'm starting to put this color just on the edges. So I'm just kind of overlapping my paintbrushes, kind of working my way along the edges of my canvas, kind of doing messy or conductor like brush strokes as I work my way around. So I want my um, purples to be the darkest on the edges, but later I'm going to add some white to my purples to make it brighter in the center. Once I get my purple all the way around the edges with the same messy brush that already has purple on it, I'm going to dip my brush into a little bit of white. And now I have both purple and white on my brush and on my hand at the same time. I want this center part of my canvas to be a little bit brighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same kinds of brush strokes kind of crisscrossing my paintbrush, but because I have both colors on my paintbrush at the same time, it's mixing the colors together for me to make this lighter shade of purple. And if I overlap my paintbrush into any of the dark purple that I put on the edges, it mixes with that too. Anytime I run out of paint, I can always grab a little bit more white on my paintbrush. And because I already have that purple in my brush and wet on the canvas, it's just going to mix those colors together for me. The nice thing about acrylic paint is if I wanted something to be darker, like maybe I don't like how bright my purple is here, I can always grab some more purple paint and I can paint it right on top of any areas that I want to be a little bit darker. And I can always grab more white paint for any parts of my canvas that I want to be a little bit brighter. So um, yeah, basically anything that you want brighter on your canvas, you're gonna add more white paint and anything that you want darker, you're going to add more of the purple paint. But if you kind of keep that messy brush stroke pattern, it kind of creates this nice texture. So it's up to you how bright and how dark you want things to be on your canvas. But the paints are gonna mix easier when both colors are wet at the same time. So that's why I'm trying to work kind of quickly. But this paint is very forgiving because you can always cover up anything that you want to change with more purple or with more white. Last but not least, if you're having troubles getting your paint to spread, you can dip your paintbrush into your water cup and sometimes that little bit of water on your paintbrush, it can make the paint a little bit more fluid and it makes it easier to spread or to cover up some of the coarse rough texture if you're using something like a canvas. So the smoother that I want my brush strokes to be, the more I kind of want to move my brush back and forth in the same area. If I want my brush strokes to be more dramatic, I can just make a mark and leave it alone. But like I said, if you want it a little bit smoother, 
then you just move your paintbrush back and forth in the same spot over and over. So once you have your purple background just the way you want, you can put that paintbrush that has paint on it inside of your water cup. Anytime I have a brush that has paint on it and I don't want it to dry inside the brush, I pop it in my water cup. And if you want to, you also have the option of painting the edges of your canvas purple as well. Some people like it when the white is just pure white of the canvas. Some people like it where the paint color wraps all the way around the edges. So I'll leave that up to you. It's a personal preference thing and we need to give our canvas some time to dry. So typically, depending on the size of the canvas, it takes usually five to 10 minutes to dry. But if you're feeling a little bit impatient, you can always use a blow dryer to um, dry out the paint a little bit faster. So we'll get back together once our paint has dried and start working on our crown of thorns. So once your canvas is all dry, we're gonna start to work on our crown of thorns. You can either free dry um, with your paint or um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this plate to kind of help me create a guideline for my crown of thorns. So I'm trying to put it in the center of my canvas and I'm going to be using a piece of chalk to trace around the edges. You could also use a pencil but the nice thing about the chalk is it's easier to erase. So I'm just tracing around my stencil and once I've made it all the way around I'm going to lift up my plate and this helps give me a guideline for my crown of thorns. I don't want mine to be perfectly circular um, but it's a good guideline. So what I'm going to do is using my chalk and you can do this step with a paintbrush as well. I'm just going to move my piece of chalk kind of in and out then kind of like a wave and you can make it really wavy or not it's kind of your choice um, but we're just trying to get like the bends and the curves of those vines and lines kind of like this so the nice thing about the chalk is anything that I don't want to keep, I can take my paper towel, I can dip it into a little bit of water, and I can always use it like an eraser to get rid of any lines that I want to change um, if I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paintbrush, this small one, and I'm going to use my small brush to trace on top of my chalk line using black paint. So even though I'm using a small brush, one thing to keep in mind is the harder you push, like right now I'm pushing down all the way with the paintbrush, that's going to give you thicker and more bold lines, kind of like this. If you want your lines to be a little bit smaller, then you don't want as much paint on your brush and you want to press more lightly and more gently. So less pressure gives you a thinner line kind of like this, more pressure gives you a thicker line like this. And I actually wanna to try to get a variety of thicknesses. That way it looks a little bit more organic. So I'm just gonna start off by tracing all the way around my chalk lines like so. Once I've made it all the way around, if you have any chalk that you can still see, don't wipe it off yet, otherwise your paint's going to smear. You want to make sure that your paint is completely dry before you wipe off any chalk. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I want to add some thorns coming off of this wavy line. So I'm going to grab some more black paint and I'm going to pick a spot where I want to add a thorn. What I do is I start off by painting a diagonal line kind of like this, and I could leave it like that and that's gonna be a nice looking thorn, but to make it look more thorn-like, I'm actually going to add a little bit more paint on this back end that's connected to the wavy line. And that creates um, more of a point. So it's more pointy at the top, a little bit wider at the base. Think kind of like a long skinny triangle shape. 
So we can add as many or as few of those as we wish in our painting. So you just always start off with a single line like this, and then you can thicken up the base of that thorn by adding in more paint. So remember, the harder you press, the thicker your lines are gonna be, and the less you press, the thinner they're going to be. So if you want to, you can add some thorns that are pointing inside as well, but I actually want to try to leave this space empty because I want room for my cross that I'm going to be putting in the center. So if you're happy with the way that your thorns look, you can leave it as is. If you want, you could even add a couple extra wavy lines kind of here and there on your crown to make it look like there's more tangles kind of like this. So I just pick a spot and I just add more wavy lines kind of here and there. And it looks like it's kind of tangling and creating um, another layer kind of wrapped around. So if you want to add more tangles or more thorns, feel free to do that at this time. So while this paint is still a little bit wet, we're going to be adding a highlight on top to make parts of it stand out a little bit brighter. It's going to give it a little bit more texture. We still want a little bit of the black showing, that way it looks more shadowy in spots. So once you finish with your black, you can rinse off your paintbrush if it has a lot of black in it, and you can dry it on your paper towel. It doesn't have to be super clean. As long as it's mostly clean, that's good enough. And I'm going to be grabbing this metallic copper color. If you don't have a metallic copper, you can use a different color, like, like a brown or a tan, but any color that's brighter than black will do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush, and using a light pressure, I'm going to add some copper on top of some of the black lines and thorns that I have in my painting. So when I do this, it makes it brighter. So right now, the way I have it, it looks like it's brighter at the top because of the copper that I added, and it's a little bit darker on the bottom because of the black that is underneath. So this can also kind of help you um, show like what tangles that you kind of want to be on top. Um, you could also use this color to kind of highlight some of your thorns to help make those stand up too. You don't have to add copper to every part of your painting. If you like the way it looks, feel free to add as much as you want, or you can add just a little bit if you feel like you don't need very much in your artwork. So hopefully that gives you an idea of kind of how that highlights it. So it's brighter in some spots, darker in some spots. Some areas look like the thorns are crisscrossing in front of other ones because of where I added the copper. And the nice thing about this step is if you didn't like the way the copper turned out, you could always paint black on top of it to cover it up. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to be putting in our cross. And we're going to be making our cross look kind of like two nails stacked on top of each other. So if you want to, you can use your chalk to help you draw out the lines for your cross. We just want to make sure that for that tall one, we are finding the middle of our canvas. Usually what I'll do is I'll kind of slide my fingers um, from opposite corners towards the middle and where my fingers touch each other, that's typically about the middle of my canvas. So I'm going to start off by drawing a straight up and down line with my chalk in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. As long as it's kind of helping give you an idea of where center is, that's all we need. We can always erase anything that we want to change. We're also going to put a line a little bit higher up um, going across this way. Yeah. 
And you, of course, can make any adjustments to your cross placement as you wish. If you want to do a different style of cross or crucifix, that is fine. Remember that anything that you don't like, you can always erase with the wet paper towel. And once you're happy with the way that your cross looks, we are going to trace on top of it using some black paint and the small paintbrush. So I'm going to clean out my small brush, get the copper off of it, dry it on my paper towel, and I'm going to grab some of that black. So I'm going to trace on top of my chalk lines like this. And if I need help spreading my paint, I can dip my brush in a little bit of water or add some water to my paint, and that can make it easier to draw with. To make these look more like nails, I want to make sure that one end is more pointed and one end is a little bit thicker. So I want this one at the top to be the thicker end of my nail. So I'm adding a little bit more of my black paint to kind of widen up the top and I want it more narrow and pointed at the base. For this nail, um, this line ended up already being a little bit thicker on this left side. So this will be the thicker part of my nail over here on this left side of my canvas. And I want to keep this end more narrow. I can add more of a point by just lightly dragging a line over and towards the right, kind of like this. But it doesn't have to be... Um, perfectly straight or smooth. I have a little bit of like a bend or a wobble on parts of my line and that is okay. If you wanted to, you could even add another nail coming the opposite way if you want it to be a little bit more balanced, um, thicker on this side, thinner on this side, but that is up to you. Um, I am going to add a little um, wider part up here. I'm just kind of drawing a line kind of right across the top and that creates a wider um, part of that nail. So it just extends a little bit past the edges. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on this left side. I'm just gonna grab my brush, put a little bit more black paint kind of extending past the sides. And hopefully that helps it look a little bit more nail-like as well. So whenever you finish getting your nails put in for your cross, um, we can highlight it with a little bit of silver paint. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to rinse off some of the black. I'm just scraping it against the bottom of my cup, drying it on my towel. It does not have to be perfectly clean. As long as it's mostly clean, that's good enough for us. And I'm going to dip it into the silver. So I want my cross to look like this nail that's going across the up and down line in the center is on top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the silver and I'm going to brush it against the upper part of this line. That way the top is a little bit brighter, but the bottom is a little bit darker. And you can add as much or as little as you wish. I'm also gonna put just a little bit of silver here on this edge as well. So because the silver is going across that first line, it looks like this nail is stacked on top. I'm gonna to add some silver on this up and down line as well, but I wanna make sure that I stop here and then continue on the other side. That way it looks like that nail is behind. So I think I'm gonna put the highlight here kind of more on this right side of this nail so I'm just grabbing a little bit of that silver and some of it's mixing in with my black paint and that's okay. But I'm gonna stop when I kind of get close to that nail that's going across left to right. And then I'm gonna continue that line underneath the nail here. That way it looks like this one is in front and there's like a little bit of a shadow before I continue that nail down. So 
So there's what those nails look like up close. So this one looks like it's in front and this one looks like it is behind. And um, if you don't like the way it looks or if you need to adjust something, you can always paint black on top of any silver. So whenever you finish your cross, um, you can always go back and start to erase any chalk lines. As long as your painting is dry underneath, that chalk will just erase and it won't smear any of your brush strokes from before. So there is a look at my painting up close. Unless there's any other details that you want to add to your artwork, you are all finished. You can put this in your per corner or somewhere that you'll be reminded of the Lenten season. And I hope that this painting brings you comfort and encouragement as you journey through Lent. Um, know that here on my channel, I post new Catholic inspired art tutorials every month. And I would love to see how your paintings turned out. Feel free to tag me on social media. If you want to support my channel, I have a buy me a coffee page and art supply wish list. I want to remind you that you are loved. God loves you very much and he loves your artwork very much. Thank you so much for following along with me. I hope you have a fruitful Lent and I will see you in the next video.